Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Go Mode Podcast Twitch channel. This is the Go Mode Podcast Mentor Tournament Twist Stage Round Two: Moo Cow versus Echo. I am secretly a sliver, joined by Dylan Lee here in the booth. Say hi, Dylan. How's it going? So we are set up to do a standard race, standard opening with randomized swords. So uh, the uncle can give you one of several different weapons at the beginning. Um, what, what weapon do you think we're going to see here? Oh, it's anybody's guess. Uh, I know there's been bow in quite a few of these seeds that I've watched. Um, bombs would be interesting. That's, that's always a, a fun one. Yeah, bombs. Uh, bombs takes a little bit of practice, but we can. Uh, it's definitely navigable. I know I've practiced a little bit myself, but I haven't come across it just yet. And here we and, go. And we send our racers off. Um, we'll see. There's. Uh, Samaria in the first chest. So Uncle is still going to have a weapon, even though that Samaria is part of the pool that he can give out. Double weapon start. Yeah, so that's always good to have backup weapon just in case, you know, Uncle does give bombs and you're not quite as practiced in that escape clear. And bombs. it is indeed bombs. And a sword. Wow, we've got all the weapons here in the first <laughs> few cuts. <laughs> so you're going to see the runners uh, killing some enemies that are maybe not directly in their way. Uh, what they're doing there is checking the prize packs because they want to get a bomb drop before they get to the back of escape here because you need to bomb open the the back to get to the three chests back there. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until you get a glove. Right, they do. They did start out with bombs there. And with cane and sword, uh, they don't even have to use the bombs. <laughs> So we're just going to go rescue the princess like we do in a normal Link to the Past playthrough that is that is not randomized. That is what standard opening refers to. So for the for the mentor tournament here, uh, both runners are are playing their own games, but they've got they've got some uh, more experienced players in their ears. Uh, Moo Cow here is being mentored by Bread Coon, who was a participant last year in last year's mentor tournament, and I believe the other mentor Shimaru was also part of last year's class mentor tournament, uh, along with myself. It's really nice to see all the participants from, or a lot of the participants from last year becoming mentors themselves. Yeah, and I can definitely personally attest that uh, going through the experience of the mentor tournament is is extremely beneficial to, uh, to my gameplay, especially. Uh, it's, it's definitely a good time, and if you're ever on the fence about, well, should I join, you know, 
should I not join? You can always just apply. Definitely, I can attest to that as well, being a mentee in the current tournament. Um, I've learned so much and uh, really grateful for the mentors and it's been a great time. Pretty uh, front end loaded escape so far. Making our way to the back here to see what's in Dark Cross. Yeah, just a slight lead for Mukau here, just about a room ahead. But... Alright, nice heart drop there from. From the snakes. Yeah, so that means they're in the vanilla prize pack. Oh, and a mirror there in Dark Cross. Is Very that nice. A lot of good stuff here in this escape sequence. Rat deciding to not run away today. And it's very cooperative. <laughs> Becky Scott Fairley, who's uh, running the tracking for us. That's that's a good tip there. Do not use the mirror. Yeah, so normally after a saving quit, uh, you want to use the mirror to get to the front of the sanctuary, but unfortunately that does not work if you're coming from Hyrule Castle into the sanctuary. It takes you to the front of Hyrule Castle. Alright, princess is saved. We got the other cane here. normal thing to do here is to just go straight to Kakariko because it's your densest location but sometimes runners like to go off the cuff here we'll see what happens right, it might be just a little bit before we see any divergence yeah so a in a standard seed, you're not normally going to see very much divergence in the first 10 to 15 minutes or so. And then from there, it depends on your item layout. All right, well, we have a blue potion on Lumberjack Ledge. That might get that abandoned. That will probably get abandoned, but it is something to keep in mind because it does it does open up another item check. That being the lazy kid or sick kid, depending on who you talk to. Explosives grow on trees over here. I'm, I'm not sure how exactly safe that is. <laughs> so, do you know how the different tiers of tree pulls work? I know, um, from what I've experienced myself, uh, depending on how many enemies you kill, slash how many you kill and not get hit, it'll change that tier. Yes, so um, because they went through the Hyrule Castle escape sequence, they've already killed more than four enemies because it's, uh, because it's required to do so. 
So they're already on either tier two or tier three. It's overwhelmingly likely that they got that they took damage, which means that they had a tier two pull for their first pull. And then for the second one, they just killed one enemy to get a regular tier one pull. Not a whole lot in Blind's Hut. Yeah, considering how loaded that escape was, I can't say I'm shocked that there's that, that it's drying up a little bit. Everybody's favorite shield. Uh, I know at least one person who doesn't like that shield. <laughs> I don't believe we've had a map check yet from either of the racers. Ryan, early boots, you love to see it. Wow. Very nice. And the pearl for sale. Can't believe the dark world is behind a paywall. gonna get a chicken through the wall oh okay just a little too early there it hasn't happened to me but i i heard you can lock the game up for throwing a chicken through there yeah so the way to clip the chicken all the way through the wall is if it hits the wall in the same frame as the bomb explodes and uh if you throw the chicken too late, Link can actually be uh, stuck in the arms up pose, which means that the sprite can't fit through the door anymore, which soft locks your game. As we do find a glove here on the library, and we uh, we did get a map check. There's a green pendant at Eastern and a pendant at Desert. And we have Centipede raining with a party of nine. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for that raid, Centipede. Okay, so Mukal deciding to go to the dam first. Oh. Finding a master sword. Very nice. And we'll see where Echo ends up going here. Yeah. Does look like Eastern is uh, vanilla with that green pendant. Only one crystal in the light world, the tower hair there. It looks like the runners are just going to follow each other for a little bit longer. Yeah, we'll see if Echo uh, goes left or decides to go ahead and go to Mini Moldorm and Ice Rod Cave. We'll see. Yeah, I actually approve of the Agina check here. Uh, if you don't get it here, you're not really ever going back. So, and if something does end up being in Agina's cave, then you just put potentially put yourself in a really bad situation. And they are a little uh, light on on liquid cash here, so I'm wondering how they're gonna manage the Zora situation. So one thing that they could do here is just clear Mini Moldorm Cave 
and maybe leave Icer on Cave, maybe just go and get it because there's not a whole heck of a lot that's left for them to check. Kind of a hammer slash mid search here at this point to look for that dark world access. Well, your dark world access could also be your lamp. Yeah. I know Twitch chat loves to see oops all dungeon seats, so <laughs> see how that works out. There's the hammer. And there's our hammer. Mukau running out, presumably to just go to Ice Rock Cave to get it over with. Uh, I do see runners skip this a lot, which uh, I probably would not do personally, but it is a good chunk of time investment to run over here. Right, and with boots, not too bad. Like you said earlier with Agina, this is one of those checks that can become isolated and Be a little unfortunate if uh, something was there. And just some help. And are we gonna see some water walking? Looks like it. Now, I wasn't aware that moo cows could walk on water, but uh, apparently I'm about to be proven wrong. Looks like it. Yep. Uh, Echo deciding that the flipper checks are not worth it and just going straight Ooh. to Hype Cave as we see a Tempered Sword on the island here. And our last pen is at Thieves Town, of course. Uh, and then we have Pod and Misery Mire as our two red crystals to open that Pyramid Fairy check. So, interesting layout. For sure. Oh, and uh, a bonk there, Moo Cow, means no more water walking. It's unfortunate, but we'll see how they decide to proceed. All right, let's let's see how hype our hype cave is. Okay, so we got a bee in a bottle and a quake medallion. It's not terrible, terrible, but not exactly what I would call hype. Well, I'd give it about a 3 out of 10. Yep, that sounds about right. It is nice to find that bottle on the way to uh, Village of Outcasts eventually. Can no, they, they both have that mirror and can do a sick kid check while they're there. Both boomerangs. Always seems to be a debate on which one's the best. Uh, so they each have their uses. Uh, the red one tends to lag your game a little bit, but you can also kind of use that to your advantage in certain situations, such as fake flippering. So it really just depends on your personal preference. Red Boomerang, when you miss, also goes all the way across the screen and takes forever to get back. As it looks like we've experienced a couple of technical difficulties on one side, but our our uh, amazing restreamer is on that. And Echo here, looking to play the arrow game, and I think they're just standing and getting some instructions from their mentor. So one of the things I love to see in the mentor tournament here is people learning stuff live during races and then just pulling it off.
I can't say that I'm uh, the greatest at that game either. <laughs> Okay, so that bee in the box was actually a golden bee, and... Oh, okay. So, yeah, normally you can sell that to the merchant for 100 rupees, but you have to have the weather vane off, completely off of the screen so that the bee attacks the merchant instead. And a book from the sick kid. Well, that technically lets us get into Desert Palace. I don't think they really want to go in there until they can light some torches. Definitely searching for fire sores. Mukau going and checking the front of Skull Woods. What do you think about this play? Skull Woods being a crystal without a fire source. I mean, you could find the fire rod in there, but with it only being two items. So the thinking here is less I'm going into a dungeon that I can't complete. It's more of this dungeon is only locked by Dark World access. So, so most people kind of treat it the same way they treat Eastern Palace, but this is a little more double friendly because of the layout of the dungeon. So you don't have to go through half the dungeon before you uh, diverge paths. So I, I see a lot of people just treat the front of Skull Woods as overworld checks, basically. I can see that. Echo successfully selling that beat merchant. Oh, and there's a, another sword, so... Got that butter sword on Lake Hylia. And I... I don't... foresee either runner going and getting it, because butter doesn't really add a whole lot to tempered can't do, but sometimes it's good for peace of mind. Oh, unfortunate death for Mukau there. Um, I didn't see if they got the chest or not. They did not. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, you'll run into these things sometimes, uh, just, it's part of racing to be able to shake stuff like that off and just, you know, take your, take your walk back and... And it is, it is a key. So one item being the shovel. Echo going into Pendant Thieves Town here. I always, I'm always a, a little sketchy on how to deal with Pendant Thieves Town, just because you're you're always going to be able to finish Thieves Town on your first time through, and it's just so tempting to do so, even though it's Pendant. Definitely, and with that hammer, that big chest could be checked as well. So. I'm not totally against this play for sure. Yeah, I mean, what I usually end up doing is just checking the front four and then leaving, and then hoping I never have to come back. But with their mirror uh, ready, think, it looks like. I believe that's... we've seen. I believe it was a small key, a map, and a 
and a big key, and then one item. So there's three items in the back of Thieves Town there. Graveyard ledge with a bow. Okay. That's fairly fortunate, I would say. Um, bow is just one of those things that, you know, can be in one of a bunch of different places, including in the dungeons that require it. So it's always good to find your first bow. Mukau mirroring the King's Tomb here, which is in logic without the myths. And we're going back to the left. I was hoping to see a, a turn jump there, but it's possible that I just don't know that trick. They also have not been to Village Outcasts, so completely fair to do that first. Oh, and there's that lamp for Mukau. So we'll see Mukau pick up everything that Echo already picked up. Are not being cooperative. Yeah, those, those ghosts hurt on green mail. It's two hearts per hit. And we'll see. Because uh, Death was on the overworld, we'll see how, how Mukau deals with this. Uh, looks like they might be going back. Okay, um, so with Thieves Town being a pendant there, uh, and on Mukau's side, you have a fully clearable pot at this point. I don't know if I 100% agree with going back to Thieves, but we'll see if this works out. Oh yeah, they do have some other checks, huh? They're just south of Village of Outcasts as well. Echo picking up their bow there. see what they do with that information. What do you think the likelihood of a Eastern completion would be? Um... At this point, I don't think it's very likely. Because even though you're going pod and eastern is the green pendant and soft pod's right there, it is... You, you do have some clearable stuff on the mountain yet. Including a clearable crystal in Tower of Hera. So I'm not sure that you should be looking at pendant completion just yet. But Eastern would certainly be... It would certainly be the fastest to complete Eastern right after you do Pod. 
And it looks like Echo is just going to go up the mountain. So. No love for Palace of Darkness today. Not yet, anyway. And I, uh, I echo that sentiment from our restreamer, Lumaga. Love the MC MSU. And it being a Saturday morning really takes me back uh, to watching Ninja Turtles on Saturday morning. Yeah, so if you're just watching and thinking, this isn't Zelda music, well, uh, you're correct. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles music that it's playing. Uh, so one of the things that uh, you can do in Randomizer is use a functionality called MSU1 to replace all of the game's music with CD quality music uh, uh, from another source. So you don't have to play with the, the normal Link to the Past music if you don't have to. If, or if you don't want to, I mean. Nothing on or in Specrock. Still yeah, so see seeing, them. We just saw stone nothing so far on the mountain. Still see them picking up that little bit of money since we still haven't seen the Azora check. We are going to get a look at the first. Oh, oh flute. And a flute on an ether tablet. Hmm. That is interesting. So normally with the flute, you want to just save and quit and go act it right away. But that's that's not really advantageous here because you would have to reclimb the entire mountain to get back to where we were. So that's going to go unactivated for a little bit. As we're going to get a Bombos tablet check on the other side. They are leaving. Uh, I believe they're going to go to Paradox Cave and look for a hookshot. And then if they're forced to go back into Hera, that's fine. They're not really wasting a heck of a lot of time. Because they're going to have to do these checks anyway. What do you think of the desert play here? It's interesting. Um... Mukau definitely has the right instinct that that book is locking something, but I think they're barking up the wrong tree here. Yeah, definitely the flute that that was behind, but we are going to see what's at least on the front of Desert here. And and I do realize that Mukau doesn't know where that flute is, but just from a pure like if rando efficiency standpoint, even not knowing where that flute is, um, you still, you have a fully clearable crystal in Palace of Darkness that, uh, that you're going to have to do at some point anyway. So, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, should be betting a little harder on Pod. Although they are short of cash, but the whole hand room is also an option. All right, Paradox oh, Cave. And the mitts. All right, the mountain has the goods. And a nice bomb jump there. There are a couple things that can mess with that bomb jump, but I didn't see any prizes drop from the mold arms, so. Alright, with that mitts grab, we are gonna check and see what the pendant for turtle or I'm sorry, the medallion for turtle rock's gonna be. 
Yeah, and Turtle Rock being a crystal, it's not a bad idea to just open the portal to do this check rather than just going to the lower. Combos. So, by virtue of that flute, Echo is going to get to do that uh, that end in desert check. Probably just looped in with a with a Meyer area check. If they indeed choose to do that, as Mukal is going to make their way up the mountain. So just little differences like that, with just one runner getting an item that makes a certain set of checks a little more convenient, can make a huge difference in the race. Definitely. Okay, gonna go into Bonk Cave, where this first chest is in logic without the hookshot. This this first chest could be the hookshot, and I have seen it there several times. Not today, though. You know, with uh, what you just said earlier, we did have a race this morning that was very close. So, little things here and there. Pick up time, lose time. Yeah, and you're not going to play perfectly every single run, so... That is for sure. <laughs> like, successfully racing Rando is more about how do you deal with adversity rather than, like, oh, can I sit down and pull off every single time save trick. But that was that was kinda interesting right there. <laughs> yeah, runners high fiving for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. See bomb jump. Half magic. Looks like no. Never say no when the game just gives you half magic. Yeah, half magic is good to have. Uh, it's certainly not required in any seed, but. It's nice to have it in the back pocket. Definitely. All right, Echo did hit that switch downstairs to give them access to some parts on the way to, to the Moldorm, who can be a little, uh, shall we say, trolly times. Hey, oh, that was a poke. You're gonna have to slash him. Oh, there we go. Nice pattern there. Yeah, pretty, pretty clean. And a second item, so we don't have to go down. We don't have to go down to the basement. As the Ramones say, I don't want to go to the basement. <laughs> Most likely a sigh of relief from both racers there. We got a spike cave check here. Yeah, that half magic kind of makes this check for me. Might as well do it while you're here. Yep, that Burna boots combination working really well.
And Mukau, once they get the mitts here, is going to be able to loop in Spike Cave at the end of their at the end of their excursion here. So I don't think we're going to get an isolated Spike Cave here. As Echo's just going to go activate their flutes, and we'll see where they go from there. Uh, Wolfing, Wolfling, I'm sorry, has a question for mentor tournaments. Are the mentors on comms with the runner during the run? Yes. Um, each of them has the mentor on the comm there. Um, each mentor is going to be different in how they like coach or take their mentee along with this race. Um, but yeah, that's the part of the the Swiss rounds here is running each match with a, a mentor. Looks like now we're going to finally go to Palace of Darkness. Yeah, and like we said earlier, um, Mentor Tournament is a blast. You get to meet all sorts of cool people. Um, get to become part of a lot of different sub-communities along with the community at large. So it really is a good time. And uh, I would recommend it to anyone who's kind of on the fence about it. In fact, for those who weren't here earlier, uh, the two mentors in this race, Redcoon and Shimru, uh, were part of the mentor tournament last year, uh, as was I. Yeah, Lumaga, I, I was going to tack on there that, which then inspires uh, current mentees to think about being mentors next year, so. Even without the hookshot, we're going to get that first chest check there. All right, so just the key in the first chest of pod. Uh, there's always going to be four keys in the first six chests here before you go past that, that small key door at the back of that pub room. As we do see an item in the second chest, so there's one more item in the front here. So activating the flute here, Mukau could choose to do something a little different because the flute gives gives access to the Meyer area. Uh, looks like they're just gonna clean up Village of Outcast though, which is well, I think they already did that, didn't they? Yeah, I thought so as well, so I'm not sure. All right, well, see this play out. Oh, they're checking the pedestal. Interesting. Uh, the pedestal is, I believe, in logic, so not a bad idea to check that. The pet is dead. All hail pet. Pet definitely does not get to see a pet seed today. All 
Alright, we are checking my area here. It's gonna be new info for us. Fire is opened by Quake, so that is, I believe, completable. It is. Nothing in the shed. I say nothing, but we still haven't seen King Zora. I don't think either runner has had 500 rupees this whole season. It's being, yeah. being very Scrooge-like. Have not seen many of the 300s. Well, there's a 50. Oh, there is a 300. So echo with that Zora money. Hey, having three keys coming out of the dark basement, you know the check the harmless hell way. And this is where we are getting some divergence here. Besides okay. money, uh, Pod's kind of been a little barren as far as items go. I got some bat food. Alright, just 20 bucks so far in Mire. Uh, one item left in there, but we're still searching for a big key. And there's the big key. Early big key. Um, you think we'll still see him clear? No? Oh, oh, we're getting spicy. Yeah. So, knowing that there is only one item left, uh, Mukau's just gonna go kill the boss and hope the hope the item's there. If it's not, just come back in to search for it. I like this play. <laughs> you like spicy plays. <laughs> I do. of a uh, little bit of turtle clean up there kind of made me sad a little bit because we've got the ninja turtles uh music playing <laughs> <laughs> using burn strats over here Two, bo two different bosses going down at the same time, and the return trip to Mire is necessary. And Pod is officially nothing. 300, 300 rupees. <laughs> 
Two two opposite gets of those red crystals there. And we are seeing Moo Cow go back in. Yeah, our tracker pointing out the uh, the red bomb is in logic and Echo saying no to Eastern Palace. Presumably just following Moo Cow into Mire here. And I wonder how long they sit on that bomb being in logic. Yeah, the Pyramid Fairy. Oh, we're looking for Fire Rod for sure. Hook shot. No, we're looking looking for both rods because we do need to kill Trinex at some point. Uh, do you need unique shot. That's and we need that, still out there. need that Bombos Medallion to open Turtle Rock. So it's, it's looking like Oh, Ooh, and a hook shot there in the compass room of of uh, Misery Meyer. So that will look good, good on Moo Cow for going back in. Yeah, you. I don't think you leave an item behind in there. Going to the boss right away is not is not an item skip. It's just uh, it's just a delay. Kind of a, right. an I need to do this anyway and hope. Hope it saves you some time. And looks like Echo is going to check Desert Palace first. Certainly an interesting decision, but uh, like I said, everybody approaches this game differently. Right, and if you have a few items that you're looking for. Uh, could still be an appendant. No, we still got a still got a handful of stuff that we need. So, from chat who's ahead uh it's hard to tell at this point they've taken some divergent paths uh mukau i believe is about to clear palace of darkness which echo has already done echo is currently clearing desert palace and presumably about to head into misery mire which mukau has already done so we're basically just just stepping each other's uh tracks at this point yeah still pretty even from most standpoints. Well, Mukau was a pet Kiki, and then Kiki <laughs> uh, jumped in front after getting paid, so. Kiki wins. Well, it's easy to win when you have a. when you're the only one that can open the stone wall before the finish line. Can't believe I get extorted by a monkey every single day. Yep. That was an odd hookshot bounce. I don't think I've quite ever seen that before. <laughs> Yet another great uh, TMNT track there in Pod. I believe Mukau created that MSU, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm boring, I don't use MSU, so I'm not very familiar with, uh, who created what. Just, uh, a lot of things you can do in this community. Um, play the game, of course, but... Do what we're doing now here, which is, uh, commentating a restream of, of a race, or... Um doing what Becky Scott Fairley's doing and and being amazing uh, tracker here and Lumaga taking care of all the the restream aspects here making it possible for us to do to do this today so yeah and we're always always looking for more volunteers this community is entirely volunteer based what you see in front of you is just people giving up their time on a Saturday to to help a 
good experience to help uh, put on a good show here. Uh, question in chat. Uh, we did have a pedestal check. It is dead. Pedestal was just a heart container. Moo cow hopped over the chest. Well, I, I've heard of a cow that could jump to the moon, so... Yeah, I think that's where they were getting it. Echo looking like they're a little confused on where to go, but Mentor steering them back in the right path. <laughs> yeah, that uh, clip title, Magnificent Tempered Plumage, wow. Yeah, so we're so we still have Swamp Palace as a clearable crystal on both sides here. Uh, I would expect them both to be looking that way after they're done with their respective bosses. Yeah, it's not going to line up exactly like last time. But we're about to see the opposite boss fights that we just saw a little bit ago. <laughs> putting on some uh, lawnmower strats here, just mowing down those eyeballs. Nice. There we are. There's about a four or five pixel band that you can dash through and and uh, hit every single eyeball with one dash. for Echo, where to now? Uh, so at this point, both runners have basically done all the same things. Um, with Hookshot, Swamp is viable. Yeah, and there's six items in Swamp, so... And saying no to Swamp. Uh, is this an Eastern Green Pendant play? Um... Okay, this is Flipper Checks. Maybe not all of them, just one. I almost thought they were taking the long way to Zora there. Yeah, I think... I think Swamp into Big Bomb just falls into place too nicely, and then after Big Bomb you can, uh, can proceed to Catfish and then Mirror to 
Zora. So we'll see if Moo Cow decides to go into Eastern here. And no, okay. Also likes the aspect of Swamp. Chat speculating on the worst place for the fire rod. Uh, there is a key layout in Turtle Rock that I believe can put the fire rod on Laser Bridge. It's very rare though. Um, Mimic Cave is also a pretty bad spot for it to be. Yeah, it's Lou Maga saying the same. <laughs> Both rods. Nothing too earth shattering in the first couple chests of swamp here. And I think we're I think we're about to see uh what our runners know about Dagger Down. And how much of a risk that's they want to take. Um both runners have been to Desert Palace. Uh Moo Cow went there fairly early. Um, when uh, after they picked up the book in Village of Outcasts, and then Echo got there as part of their uh, Binder trip. We are going to see Diver Down from Echo here. Set that bomb up. Not a hundred percent. Okay. I wasn't 100% sure that that explosion would reach, and um, I don't think Echo was either. That'll be a lot easier to see. There we go. Yep, never a bad idea to get rid of these enemies here. Yeah, something you can do to fend that fire snake off is to just, even if you're uh, question in chat. What's the point of that bomb? Uh, you're about to see. So, after we do this diver down and you see the transition, that's what the bomb is for, to activate the switch. Uh... Question in chat. Uh, we have dipped the front four of Thieves Town on both sides and the front skull woods. Yeah, so you have to go and get that key anyway. And having that having that uh, switch be stored uh, lets you go go down from the switch room because the flaps are down and then it and then it. Uh, uh, flips the crystal switch in an advantageous position. It's it's a time save with zero risk. Oh, 
Oh, Swamp turning up like pod so far. And there's still a lot to go in the back yet. I'm just waiting for that Bombos medallion to turn up. Wonder if it's just sitting under the mat there in Hookshot Cave. Could be there. Could be on Zora. There is Fire Rod. Alright, there's our Fire Rod. There is still one item left in Skull Woods that we haven't seen. Yep, either the moth's holding on to it or it's under the bridge. Or it could be in the big chest. I don't believe we saw Big Key in Skullwood, so most likely Big Key under the bridge. Um... I don't know how many small keys we've seen, but uh, Moth cannot have a small key, or it can't have a big key that leads to a small key. So I'm thinking the item is most likely to be on Moth. Did Mukau just skip the waterfall chest? Hey. Oh. Okay, Tracker's saying our, that the waterfall chest was the compass, but that's uh, that's a, a bit of a bit of a brain fart there. Right. Not gonna say I've never done it because that would be summarily untrue. Now the only problem with that is when you're looking for items, and uh, he he can't find an item that you need. You're going to think back and go, what chest did I not get and come here and it's not going to be anything. No, I don't remember seeing Swamp Map. All right, big bomb on Mukau's side. Uh, Echo's gonna go uh, buy some potions. Might be headed to Ice Palace, maybe? Maybe it's it like is it. uh, interesting that we're not seeing uh, them both take the bomb. Yeah, so Ice is now a clearable crystal, um, and you can always just flute right back to the big bomb. Uh, I probably would have picked up that armor, but yeah, dealer's choice. It's still on green mail. Oh, free blue potion there. Yep, they are going to go pick up that blue mail. I think we'll have catfish check here. Nope. Oh, uh, looks like uh, just running down to Thigh Palace. Uh, I don't believe that Mukau did hobo on their water walk adventure, so. It's 
a, it's a nice cleanup right here. And a very nice icebreaker there by Echo. First try always feels good. <laughs> the normal hobo, hobo check, says Chet. Mukao is going to pick up that butter sword on the way. Yeah, there's not a lot of uses for the butter sword, but one of them definitely is killing Cold Star a lot faster. And it's just right in the path, so pretty convenient to get. Definitely. Uh, what do they need for go? Yeah, we're we're looking for Ice Rod and Bombos Medallion. Which... Ice Rod could be pretty much anywhere. Uh, Bombos can be pretty much anywhere except for inside Turtle Rock. death there by Echo. Um, it's just one of those things. Gotta, gotta shake out the cobwebs and go right back in. Frustrating for sure. But yeah, just gotta take the punches and keep on going. Yeah, those full magics from the from the gels and the jellies kind of make this a a bit of an easy decision. Sometimes when you die in Ice Palace, you're uh, fairly low on magic. As uh, Echo looks like it's getting bodied by Pen Gators here. Uh, Butter Sword was on Hylia Island. Yeah, but just, just the path that Mukao took versus the path that uh, Echo took, uh, it was it was in Mukao's path, but it was not on Echo's path. So it made sense for Echo to skip it. Great. Echo showing off some backup strats, didn't get it the first time, and then was able to reset the block and try again, but it's like they're gonna have to... There we go. Uh... Mukao getting some extra magic from in this room so they can use their fire rod Delo. Uh, 
But in case anyone was wondering what was behind that locked door, uh, that's it. Three magics, five arrows, and a bomb. I like to call it the Ice Palace safety room. Ooh, Mikael, uh, showing some tech here, where, uh, if you hit Cold Stare with a sword beam while your, uh, fire rod shot is still... is still on screen, then it counts as two damage to the shield, so you can save some fire rod shots that way. Very nice. Echo very smartly farming fairy up in that room. Don't want to take another face to plant. Definitely not. Uh, those deaths, especially when you're deep in a dungeon, can be costly. Eh, looks like we're headed to Skull Woods here. Why not? It's a crystal, it's clearable. Go do it. Oh no. Cold Stare does hit pretty hard with Green Mail. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is another part of racing as well, is that uh, if you die somewhere and you can go do something else, like, I believe this is probably just the Skull Woods today. Or extra potions? Okay, we're getting a, a refill from the Potion Witch instead of going and clearing things woods for the refill. Oh, we're doing both. Okay, good. Yeah, if you're struggling with something, like, definitely do something else. Try to make your life a little easier before going back and doing it again. In this case, uh, killing the moth will refill your health, it'll refill your magic. Give you time to shake out the, the cloudiness in your mind. We've all been to that place. I can't say it's particularly fun in the moment, but definitely learn a lot from it. And uh, still, still a couple of technical difficulties, uh, but our amazing restreamer is working on getting the other side back up. But we'll get to see him off fight on this side at least. Jelly's being a little, uh, little mean with just sparking and being in the way. Uh, so we did get a get a little glimpse of Mukau's tracker there. It looks like they were successful in uh in taking the moth down. Oh, wall master. As yeah, wall masters can be tricky. Uh, it looks like our last item is in the big chest. Of I'm Skull guessing Luke. moth had the big key then. And it's a piece of heart. So now comes the question, what do now? Clean up, maybe? Uh, I'm thinking Thieves Town because you're right there. And you do know there's three items in back. And then it's like when Cal agrees with me.
um, Smith chain, okay? Probably slightly faster than a Thief Sound Clear would be. Yeah, I don't believe we've seen Hammer Pigs either, so. Or yeah, bad. we haven't we haven't been here since we got the mitts up on the mountain, so. That is a interesting colored moth. Gotta love those palette swaps. Yeah, if the colors look a little weird to anyone, do not adjust your vision set. We are controlling the transmissions. It's just both runners have palette swap on. I don't like palette swap personally, but uh, I'm a little biased because I'm colorblind, so it makes things hard to see for me. I was about to say I was in the same boat where I, 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 I like watching other people palette swap, but I don't necessarily like it myself, just out of a gameplay aspect. But all right, uh, we had a pedestal check earlier, but yeah confirms that uh, that that is nothing. And what does Batman have for us today? Just Money. 300 bucks. And uh chat bringing up a great point you could just because because of those deaths you could just uh go straight up the mountain and try to um try to rip the bombos out of hookshot cave to get internal rock not quite close enough to the pit for right there i think he's still one too low it looks like Mukau is planning on going in and finishing Thieves Town after this purple chest check. Just some bombs. Yeah, I might have done Thieves Town before the purple chest. Um, just because it takes a while to call up a duck. But it's part of the beauty of watching races, is just seeing people do all sorts of different things. I'm going to save and quit here. Is this race plus round two? Round three? No, this is the mountain. Oh, could just be getting a refill, huh? Yep, just the health refill. Is a little bit quicker than the sank spot. Uh, Hera has a little bit of added pressure there, DFS, so if you fail the Skullwoods one, it's it's whatever, but if you fail the Hera one, it's you're down two floors and you have to re-climb, so might be psychological. Alright, Ice Palace round three. As we uh, get to see what else is in Thieves Town here. You know, depending on if we find anything in here or not, this is where we could see one of the runners pull pull away a little bit there. This, this race is certainly far from over because uh, it looks like 
Mukao's gonna spend a good bit of time here, and if uh, if Echo chooses to skip this and it ends up being nothing, then all of a sudden they made up a whole lot of time. We also, I don't believe the Eastern Palace has been touched yet. And that's have not. four items in there with the green pendant thrown in. And there is Ice Rod. Okay, so thieves is required. Um, yes, when they when they cleared pod, both of them had the mirror for the option for the option of doing eastern, and both of them passed it up. Uh, you can mirror blind. It adds, I believe, four screen transitions and a whole bunch of screen lag because you now have a follower. It's faster to climb back up. Bukow opting to finish that out with the Burna. And getting a mushroom, so we had two two items in Thieves Town. Yeah, the ice draw being in Thieves Town is uh <laughs> probably not ideal on Echo's side. It's... Kinda wanna skip pendant dungeons, especially long pendant dungeons like Thieves Town. Right. We will see. Mushroom check here. Yeah, that's yeah. a quick enough check. So when you're one item from Go mode like Mukau is, you wanna you wanna do the checks that are uh that are the closest to where you are, like the ones that you can get to the quickest, not necessarily the densest checks. Also, it looks like Mukau's gonna wanna buy some potions here also. Well, with the game finally being generous with money, <laughs> not a bad idea. All right, gonna check Hookshot Cave for that Bombos medallion. For those just joining or want to know, Mukau is one item away from go mode. Um, do need that Bombos medallion to get into Turtle Rock. So we are seeing Echo um, do Pyramid Fairy. So most likely see them also pick up the blue mail. One of Echo's outs here is if Bombos is on Catfish. Because I don't think Mukau ever goes there. Catfish or Zora. Which, uh, Echo has just enough money for Zora there. But I'm also not sure how good it is for Echo to find Bombos first, because that will probably just cause them to clear Turtle Rock instead of going into Thieves Town to get that Ice Rod. I know that's what I would certainly do. I would definitely choose Turtle Rock over Thieves Town, looking for a nice pro. There and there's is. that Bombos medallion, and at 128.12, Mukau has entered go mode. under the doormat and feels bombos man
There really is an emote for everything up there. We seeing? Oh, all right. Yes. I I don't believe Echo did any flip for decks, whereas Mukao did earlier. Been in that situation, I I have learned not to swing and just take the hit. Yeah. So while we're waiting on this uh, uh, rather lengthy dungeon before the lengthy dungeon at the end of the game, uh, go ahead and give our give our runners a follow. Uh, New Cow 1980 and uh, and Echo. Uh, go ahead and follow our amazing tracker as well, who has been silently killing it behind the scenes. Thank you, Scott Fairley. And uh, also thank you to our restreamer Maga, who kind of put this together on somewhat short notice. But uh, thank you for indulging Dylan and I for wanting to do comms. Very much appreciated. Bundle of arrows on that catfish. Wait, the Illuminaga? I have not heard of this. <laughs> did, did we did we sell our souls to a secret organization? Might be Illuminaga's followers. <laughs> what all of us know now is unfortunate to uh, see these checks here come up with nothing uh, what Echo's doing makes sense um, definitely definitely want to get this overworld done but unfortunately your ice rod is hanging out in a pendant dungeon and your bombos is under the doormat See Mukau put on the gas and skipping lava chest. Yep, this is this is the way to go mode Turtle Rock. You steal the pokey key and then you don't go outside, you just go to the right here. This is assuming that you've found the big key by the time you're at uh lava chest, because if you haven't found the big key, then your big key has to be in lava chest. one of the functionalities of that red boomerang that we were talking about earlier that, that can hit the crystal switch in this room whereas the blue has a little bit more setup to be able to hit with that switch well this is certainly one way to do the dark maze <laughs> I think that might have been a, a misclick. All right, we're back on track. Nope, no pun intended or pun intended? Oh, pun absolutely intended. <laughs> and just in case people didn't know about those, uh, those pots on the right side, you can fill your magic and get a couple extra hearts. They are extremely valuable if you're low on magic uh, entering this room and you either don't know your laser skips or just feeling lazy that day and that cape's been elusive this scene as well 
Oh no. Uh oh. They were looking. They were looking for silvers. They have the big key. Yeah, but uh, did we they just don't get have two a small key? Did we just get two percented? Yes, we did. Oh boy. Okay, so according to Turtle Rock Key Logic, there is only one situation where doing Gomo Turtle Rock can really screw you over, and this is it. And that situation is exactly if the lava chest has a small key and the big chest has a small key. Uh, that is somewhere between a 2 and 3% chance to happen at any given time. And it is the first time that I have actually seen it. And I'm I'm not actually sure what the fastest route to get back to the uh, the big chest is. I've never timed it. <laughs> it's just so unlikely to happen. Right. Uh, gotta go out of the dungeon. Yep. Yes, very, very unlucky. You said uh, 2%? It's either 2 or 3%. And there's that key. Chat saying it's 2.4, so close enough for me. The two mental, two minute mental debuff. Um, yeah, probably. I'm still in shock that it happened, and I'm not even playing the seed. You know, as a as a racer yourself, you feel it. Helma being friendly as usual. Uh, it's well known in Hylia that um, that many more or many Helmas are really attracted to links. I like to, to scurry up on you. Just have to give him a, give him a little pit. Swapped it, but like it's like a green head. <laughs> I, I cannot tell the difference. That's okay. I, I couldn't even tell that that head it was, was head. It was Christmas Trinex, <laughs> red fire head, green ice head. <laughs> oh, nice. We have our seventh crystal in hand. What does that mean, Dylan? We're going to GT. And uh, uh, just Lumaga already already did what I was gonna say. What 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 do we think? What how many checks?
All right, get your get your guesses in chat. GT Big Key is going to be anywhere in, in one of 22 different checks that we can do. So, um, let's go go six today. I'm feeling feeling 11 for some reason. But I also don't know uh, how Mukao typically clears GT. Yeah, I always like doing five or six because people who don't check Hope Room before doing DM Room uh, get burned by Hope Room. But looks like we're going to Hope first. Uh, question in chat. Spin speed hammer has to be slower for the helmet kill. It is not, actually. Um, spin speed hammer is how you kill Helmosaur in the no major glitches speed. So it is actually the fastest option. I room getting no love. Um, I'd like to preface by saying this is a joke. Uh, tile room is out of logic because we don't have the cape. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh my! Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Wallmaster. <laughs> as far as the racers go, Wallmaster two, racers zero. We're about to see another grab there. Silvers. Free silvers on the way. So, uh, Mukau's gonna have a, a good time the... with Ganon. I believe that's number six. So, now we're, uh... on torch this time. Have Echo is still searching for Bombo. I believe. making the hookshot cave play here, they will find it. Uh, I don't see why you would go up here. Like, hookshot cave is the only thing left up here, so. It's just very fortunate that they cleared Thieves Town before coming back here. Or else this could have turned even worse than it already is. Chugging along here. I've lost count, but I, it, it definitely wasn't 11. <laughs> uh, 6, 7, 11, 12, 13. So this is going to be 14 through 17 in here. I don't think anyone guessed higher than 14 so we we all lose
But you know what? We all win because we've gotten to watch this amazing race today. Well, the the prize for guessing GT correctly, I, I assume it just gets wrapped into the next person that gets uh that guesses GT correctly, which then they will they will earn uh, two lifetimes of a link to the past randomizer seeds. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. That is not good. Gotta reset the room there, because you do need to get Bob's chest, even though Bob has not made an appearance. Can't forget Bob. I'm kind of with uh, Becky Scott fairly at this point. <laughs> but it's out of logic. Yeah, those silvers just melt that ice armos. Oh. There's our big key. Number 20. Time for the climb. of a music track. I have a strange urge to fight uh, Shredder and Krang at this point. <laughs> oh, the cape was on the left side. Okay. Yes, Lil Mago, we did get a little bit of an upgrade there in, in the music. Ooh, nice double hit there by uh Cal. Go, go out the bottom. No, Echo, no. Mm -hmm. I hate to see it. Also, also 2%. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate, but that, that is the popular play to do. Yeah, and at this point, you know, I, I can only assume mentally, like, I, I need to make up some time. So you're going to make those plays. Oh, it's also 97.6% of the time you're correct to make that play. It's like overwhelmingly unlikely for you to have to go back for anything. Echo also dancing around the rails. Must be something wrong with the tracks today. Uh, in the Turtle Rock Big Chest, there is a small key, but you that you need to to get to get to that to, to go to the place.
looks like Echo is indeed running out. As uh, as someone in chat mentioned before, it might be a little bit faster. Who given a little bit more of a dance than Moldrum one. <laughs> gotta check that validation chest there. Yeah, I gotta make sure your run's been good. You can have <laughs> Butter Sword, Silvers, a bunch of hearts, and blue mail. At least I think we got blue mail at some point. Yes, on, on Pyramid. Red mail? We don't know. That was very close to being three. And the three there. All right. The wizard is dead. All that's left is kill pig. Classic theme. Super Shredder. Now, Taping Oak does not want to take any chances with this boss fight. I wouldn't, not knowing uh, if my opponent's right on my heels or. Yeah, I mean, if you're dropping into Ganon and you see your opponent's not done yet, it's definitely a, a good hedge to just be nice and nice and safe with Ganon. Alright, Mukao prioritizing that torch glitch. Um, it, I've seen debate whether you want torch glitch or you don't want torch glitch in these scenarios. Ooh, the hug there. Close. Number three and four coming shortly. Get your GGs, GGs. in chat for Mukao. 1980, who is going to advance to 4 and 0, just tearing through this Swiss bracket within official race time time of uh 152 13. GG's. That's as for the standings right now that that puts uh Mukao and Frankie Fusion the only that are 4 and 0 currently. Still They're a still... few there's still a few races to go yet. Uh, racers have until, I believe, tomorrow at 11.59 to get their race results in. Mm -hmm. And we are joined here in the booth by Mukao and their mentor, Breadcoon. GG. GG. GG's. GG's. Yeah, GG. So that, that 2%, huh? <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, 2% in Turtle Rock. Echo ran into it just a few minutes ago you hate to see it I, it was funny is at the start we we're going the dungeon it was like yeah you know we'll just go right like you know there is only like there's like a two percent chance that you won't get the key but you know <laughs> I, it's it's so rare i've only seen it like once in racing this game like yeah we're let's just go through it oh all so right so, so Cal, about that two percent <laughs> are you ever gonna listen to something that bread tells you ever again <laughs> Look, I listened to Mr. Ed, and I got to win. I think I can listen to Brett just fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so any of my erratic movements in this game, uh, I would like to thank Emma for being my co-pilot today. Um, she really got on my nerves and was doing things to get my attention, and she still is because she's a brat. So, like, you know, when I was in 
Turtle Rock and I can't seem to get around on the uh, floating part or whatever to hook, I don't know what you call it. Um, riding the platform, yeah, that was all yeah. her. And Emma would be... Maybe a cat? Yeah, Emma's a cat, yeah. Sorry, she was still... Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's always nice to get cat aggro during a race. Oh, when I get cat aggro, I get cat aggro because they don't they don't stop. Mm -hmm. Emma just wants my attention the whole time and I'm sitting there playing like get out of the room and I'm like using my foot to nudge her wag and a squirt pot oh. on like stop in the middle and squirt it. <laughs> yeah. It is uh something that can happen during races, um IRL distractions. <laughs> Oh, right. There was a race. Uh, somebody mentioned a cat. Just anyway. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> how, how did you all feel uh, just overall about that seed? I, it, from up here, it just didn't really seem like you were allowed to skip anything. Kind of felt like that to me. Like at first we're looking and and Brett's like, uh, pot is or pet is completely in logic right now. And so when I went to do the flute, knowing everything i said let's just check it and he was like okay just get it off our minds because if it was then we could have routed some things accordingly but thank god it wasn't yeah pet being in logic basically as soon as you get dark world access it's like hmm i don't know how i feel about this honestly <laughs> uh I was, I was worried that could have potentially been something but Always, yes, you couldn't really skip anything. That ice rod, I could see being a little mean. Cause... Yeah, some other some other interesting divergence we had is uh, after Swamp, uh, you guys went for the big bomb where your opponent just went straight to Ice Palace and tended to struggle a little bit. Uh, was that was that a safety move because you knew that sword was on the way or what went into that decision? Basically, I was thinking in case we didn't find silvers, that just shaves a few extra seconds since we're right there. Yeah, but my thought process go. was with how many items we still needed for go mode, I highly doubted we were just going to hit go mode and ice. I was like, well, screw it. Let's just do big bomb now because if we, because we're not going to hit go mode and ice. Probably just going to end up doing big bomb anyway at some point. So let's just do it now. We can hit that. We can hit pyramid. But then I was also thinking, like, well, since since uh, since the water walk got messed up earlier in the seed, we can just mirror in front of Hobo and just get that cleared out real fast. And since we're in the area, hey, we can grab a pretty much a free butter sword. About as free as you can get from that that position, anyway. Right. Uh, there was a question before about your MSU. Did you make this MSU, Mukel? Yes, I did make it. This is my first MSU I ever made. It's my magnum opus. I will never, ever top it. But yeah, <laughs> I this is the first one I went back after I had more experience and tweaked it, redid it a little bit so it was more polished. And it's been my go-to ever since. Yeah, well, nice. we've been, we've been getting some compliments on it in chat. So very well, appreciate well done. Chat. Appreciate chat very much for that. These things take a little bit of time to create. So, you know, I appreciate it. Oh, um, my. <laughs> now we got Chat. another cat aggro. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've made several MSUs. So if you go into the MSU community and you know look look under my name, you'll you'll see several of them. I've like made an F zero one. I've made a Mega Man X one through three one. I've made Final Fantasy eleven, a Final Fantasy five. So I've I've made several of them. Uh, I have seen that Mega Man X 1 through 3, and it is as, just as phenomenal as this TNT one, so. Yeah, that's probably the second best one I'll never get topped. I don't think I'm ever topping those two. I think I've peaked, and everything else I make is just going to be whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine, because I have I know my MSUs are properly used, so. I admit, I go on the streams when people are playing it and work, just to listen to my MSU and feel all proud inside, because, you know. You struggle with mental health issues like I do. Any little wins that you get in the day are, are the greatest things in the world. So I take them and just glad to see people have fun in the community and 
And that was another reason I made the Emma Shoes, because I had so much fun watching these people over the years and racing and everything that I wanted to give back somehow. So, you know, I made the Emma Shoes. I've done some restreams of tournaments. In fact, I'm restreaming the main tournament second game final today. And, you know, so nice. it's just my little way to, to give back to everybody. But yeah, so appreciate that. Yeah, so we did mention before, but uh, even if you don't actually play the game, or you're you're just not uh, not at the point where you're gonna race it yet, you can still contribute to the community in ways like Bukow has already done. Yeah, and it's it's just a lot of fun to to be part of it because I've found that people are very nice. I've asked questions and I get about ten answers from ten different people, and you know, not that it's a bad thing. A lot of them are usually saying the same thing or agreeing, but it's just the idea that people are so quick to jump in and help, and that's kind of made me feel more comfortable as I go through this mentor tournament. Um, I've probably had like in four races and probably had like two other practices. So I've had six different mentors I've interacted with so far, and I plan to do a few more just to kind of maximize the tournament for me. Nice. Yeah, and I believe you're, you're what, 4-0 now? Just absolutely Somehow. carrying through the standings? No pressure. Somehow I'm 4-0. I mean, these last two wins were pretty uh, decisive in this round. I don't know how, because I felt like I was behind, but yeah. Um. The first, the first two wins were a little bit interesting. Of course, uh, the third win I had, I rolled the most garbage of seeds. That was an all dungeons, as in lumberjack and pet were both required. No, so no, this one, it, no, it wasn't bad. <laughs> this, this one, a lot better. So, definitely, you know going to not roll my own seeds going forward and let people like Lumaga <laughs> just roll them. <laughs> so, but yeah, this was kind of nerve-wracking at first. I admit, I woke up at like 11.30 a.m. Eastern. The race was <laughs> noon Eastern, so some of those mistakes earlier were me just waking up and then it was cats. There are some things I legitimately take, uh, you know, ownership for, but, um, you know, to have all those little things, because I just didn't want to wake up today because I had a long day yesterday. I was like, I want to sleep and relax. I'm like, no, you got to get up and do something. But just kind of relaxing a little bit and forcing myself up. And I was just like, yeah. And then Brad didn't have his coffee right away. So, <laughs> for, so for like the first 10 to 15 minutes, we're like autopiloting. Thank goodness it was a standard uh, race so we could autopilot escape. <laughs> Um, then we finally both woke up and got it in gear, and I think we got along pretty well. No, yeah, well, I definitely saw some good stuff from up here. And there's a lot of little tricks and stuff that I don't know yet, or I'm not comfortable with doing. So, like, like the bomb jump and Hera, I just skipped it and said I'm just going to go up the top way because I don't want to waste the time. But uh, that's yeah, there's, my there's definitely. Camera. There's definitely a lot to learn. Like, I definitely took a different path than normal people. So I came in, like, knowing most of that stuff. And I still learned a, a ton from the mentor tournament. So, like, just having to learn all of the stuff that I learned, plus, like, all of the all of the basic stuff, like, movement and, and like, tiny little tricks that you pick up from speed run, it, it really does add up. Yeah, and, and a lot of it, you know, I've been picking up for, for some time over years and, you know, sometimes kind of self-taught my things from watching people and just getting fair enough information. So, and then just been refining it like Icebreaker. I used to do Icebreaker kind of on my own and just no buffer at all. And then just recently within the past month, someone said, I said, you know, hey, I'm not getting consistency with this. I have no idea why. And someone in the community said, why don't you just sword buffer the frame to the left, and then you should be able to press down and go through the wall. Um, turns out, it was right, and it worked. So that was just one little example of, of how helpful the community is and trying to maximize you. It's not like, you know, people aren't looking at this as, hey, we're helping, you know, 
mentor the people that are going to beat us tomorrow. We're mentoring people because we want to have a, a great growing community. And part, part of what I said was mentoring is like, it, the, learning this game, like there is a there is a laundry list of like micro optimizations you can do. I mean, obviously, if you just look at the speed run, there's there's a there's just a ton of things you could optimize every single run. But like for now, like hey, just focus on the major things. Get 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 the big get the big time saves that you can learn and know you're generally routing things well and um. You know, no, knowing the major tricks, like getting consistent icebreaker and diver down, and things like that, that end, end up just saving just you know a couple minutes on their own. Speaking and, of the speaking of the speed run, I believe uh, we have one of those coming <laughs> up very soon. Yeah, I decided to see how NMG League will go. I'll see if I'll uh, make a joke of myself doing the proper speed run, but we'll see. <laughs> So I'm just we'll, curious uh, from you guys. Um, I know he's at Aga too right now, and I'm just curious if you guys. Yeah, you might have said it earlier. And I just missed it with Cat Aggro, but I was just kind of curious if you can notice what maybe what a turning point he was when I watched his back. I kind of know what to look for, or what kind of really made things click in the seed. So you guys were fairly close for the whole uh, seed up until. Um... Your opponent went to Ice Palace while you were uh, doing the Big Bomb, and they really just struggled in in Ice Palace overall, but uh, had a had a death pretty deep in the dungeon and then a death on Cold Stair. So that's that's where you kind of pulled ahead. Ouch. Yeah, I've been there with deaths like that. That's not fun. You have to go all the way back in there and do that. I would say that's... Uh where the main time difference was were those deaths and then um i don't think you ever did uh zora or catfish correct yeah somehow we never did <laughs> so I, yeah, they, I they, they were doing those checks putting, as well i was planning on putting that off for a while <laughs> yeah you did you guys did uh juggle the lead back and forth a few times uh in the first say 50 or so minutes so um and i think your guys cleanup route was a little better than uh than theirs ended up being because uh you guys just got these down earlier uh luckily neither of you just went straight to hookshot cave and had to clear turtle rock twice yeah i was i was, I was wondering if that was gonna end up happening because like you know this ice rod is uh, honestly a pretty mean location potentially <laughs> and we pulled it. And yeah. the pace down on the other side. Get your GGs in chat for Echo. GGs. Yeah, that, that ice rod in Thieves Town Big Chests. <laughs> and then I almost mirrored out and left. And it was like, wait, we got one more item to go. I had to run back all the way in. At least I still yeah. had the maiden with me. But I was thinking, ice rod, go mode. And I was like, no, 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 no. We need one more item. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if uh, they're up for an interview here. Uh, yeah, but again, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for being on restream here and letting us uh, letting us talk about your gameplay and such. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, watching it back when I got a free moment here this weekend, and you know, just kind of see how I played in comparison to others, and see what stuff I can you know trying to learn or clean up on, and hopefully just remember that I was either half asleep or had cat aggro, so this wasn't my cleanest seed by far, but you know, kind of is what it is. So, we are now joined by Echo and their mentor, Shimar. GG to you both. GG. GG, thank GGs. you. GG's. GG's.
So, uh, I got to talk about the the struggle in Ice Palace. Um, is that uh, is that something that's on the practice list now? I will say uh, I will before, before I say that was partially my fault. Uh, I would I think I should have been better about relaying some directions, and I think I confused oh. a little bit in some places. So there was some kind of slow reaction to that. So that's part of that is on me for sure. Uh, yeah, normally I'm not bad with Ice Palace, but once I had that first death, my stress level went up, and then I got a lot sloppier of a second time through. Well, one thing that I know I mentioned a few times is, uh, is you know, despite all the deaths, you tend to just kind of recover and get right back in there on it, so, uh, so good job on that. That's a really hard skill to master. Thanks, uh, yeah, it's, I've been... Uh, doing Lando for a bit, but uh, first time really racing ever, so. First time racing as in this entire tournament, or? Yeah, in this entire tournament. Like, this is my very first time ever racing. Uh, that, that's a big kudos there. And I would assume one of her first times dealing with a, a three, nice three percent seed. Cool, cool stuff. Video game. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you all got to experience that lovely turtle rock. Yes. And I never experienced it either, so I, I don't know about you, Echo. <laughs> hey, you you get it. It's, it's two or three percent or whatever. You get it once, once in a blue moon, where it's gonna make you afraid of it again for probably a week or two, and then you'll slowly forget about it. Until it hits you again. Yeah. It's just how it goes. Thing, yeah. Important thing is just not to mirror. <laughs> just don't mirror, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, any any general thoughts about the seed? Uh, it seemed like everything was kind of scattered around. Can couldn't really skip anything and feel good about it. Uh. Having three swords so, so early was really nice. My last couple seeds, I played m the majority of it in fighter sword, so having tempered so early felt really nice. Yeah, our, our one of our last practice seeds, uh, we'll say Echo got very familiar with fighter sword Vitrus. Oh, fun. <laughs> so, very glad not to deal with that this time. Everyone and Master Sword, Master Sword Ganon. Yep, yep. I definitely master sword gain in uh in in our in our match there, Mukau. <laughs> yeah. Um I try to avoid it when I can. I got lucky with our race because I definitely was able to get tempered and the silvers, which that was our difference, was I made two extra checks and you didn't, and I got the items that let me catch up, so it makes it's all the difference sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to be too thorough because that can lose you, but at the same time, you know, homemade beer taught me something. It's not so much last locating, it's last locating most efficiently. So if you're efficiently running around, even if your opponents took some shortcuts, if you're efficient, it may not be a, a difference in the end because you may just be right there. So, right. Um, you know, that's what I've kind of been learning and trying to abide by is just, you know, I've had my mentors, basically, I'm telling them, like, look, I can learn to do the blind fight script later. I can learn to do cannon fights better later. I can learn to, to do hammer, yump, and pod later. But I need the routing. I need to know how to route. I need the guidance on the routing so I can learn to make smarter and better decisions. So that's what I've been doing during this minute tournament. So I, I don't care about anything else. I just want the routing because I can learn everything else on my own. But if I get the routing, that's the invaluable experience that I need. Yeah, exactly. Routing can be one of the harder things, too. That, and for me, uh, I would say breaking bad habits and creating bit like good habits. <laughs> just overall. Well, sometimes you just get things like this, see, where it's just kind of like, well, pick a bad spot to go to and hope it's it. <laughs> like, we ended up just going to Thieves area just because, you know, it had the density. But it easily, something easy could have just been in Eastern... 
like that bombos could have been anywhere i think we, we went to hookshot cave like after um these because it felt like we needed to take a little chance at least after the deaths and yeah that's a uh, that, that would have been a fun little trap for somebody to run into if they just go to hookshot cave before going back to thieves town so yeah that we were prepared to make that gamble like we literally were going to do that and it was like well we're here let's just do thieves town first because it's got a lot of items in the back that was the only reason we didn't end up with that trap all right uh any final thoughts from any of our runners or mentors i guess ggs again it was uh um great race um you know just keep your head up or the most important thing is is not the record it's just how much you're learning out of it if you're not learning anything then it doesn't matter if you're learning a lot then it doesn't matter what your record is so just kind of keep your head up and i'm going to keep my head up and you know see what else we can learn yeah exactly yep you know that's what these swiss rounds are for uh till we get the brackets and then as far as the entire tournament goes if we've all come away uh, as better players um, and had a fun experience, that's that's the big thing. Okay, well, thank you once again to our restreamer, Lumaga, uh, and our tracker, Becky Scott Fairley, and to you, Dylan, uh, for sharing the booth with me today. Uh, thank you to our runners for being on Restream, and uh, I am secretly a sliver. Uh, this has been the Go Mode Podcast, and we will see you some other time. <laughs>